Dr. William Pettit explained what it was like to wake up in unbearable pain and not knowing yet what was to come. News aide's Jamie Muro is covering today's development. He joins us live outside of New Haven Superior Court. Jamie. And then Keith, good evening. You know, when you think about the grief that this man must face every day, then it really is amazing how Dr. Pettit is able to go into this courthouse, get up on the stand and talk about that day play by play, step by step of what he remembers, and he does not get overly emotional. For some in the gallery, though, that could not be said the same way. It's understandable why Dr. William Pettit has mostly kept quiet about the events that unfolded at his Cheshire home on July 23, 2007. Quiet until he's required to speak. And although his testimony during the Hayes trial revealed some specific details of that torturous day, his appearance on the stand today was anything but ordinary. I thought he did great. I think he, he, he's, he's very steady. He, he thinks about what he's going to say, and, and he knows what he's going to say, and he says it. His speech was very deliberate, to the point, composed. He told the jury about the events that led up to the attack, golf with his dad, his wife and daughters at the beach who would later come home to cook dinner. But the beautiful life begins to shatter when the baseball bat hits his head. He described searing pain, blood in his eye, but still making out figures around him wearing masks. He hears one voice say, quote, if he moves, put a bullet in him. He's taken to the basement, tied up. There at times he hears Jennifer talking about a checkbook. He never hears Haley or Michaela. Later he would hear loud thumps and moaning. The defense did cross-examine Pettit. Attorney Jeremiah Donovan reminding the doctor how he told police at one point that some memories of the invasion have become cloudy. Donovan wanted to know if Pettit's testimony was based on actual events he remembers or whether they stem from his being present for two trials listening to testimony. Pettit's father found the questions irrelevant. I don't see any sense to it whatsoever. I don't see, I don't see that it has a bearing on, on where we're going. Now, Pettit was not the only person to testify today. There was a former Cheshire police officer, a sergeant now retired, and also Captain Robert Vignola. And he testified that at one point when he arrived on the scene, he saw Commissar Jeski run out from the side of the house, throw a bag into the Pettit Chrysler Pacifica, run back around the house, then come back out with Stephen Hayes. Hayes gets in the passenger seat. Commissar Jeski gets in the driver's seat, and that's when they ram into the first police cruiser and then drive off. As far as Commissar Jeski, and we said this yesterday, and it's important to note today, you probably remember Stephen Hayes almost seemed disengaged during his trial. It is quite the opposite with Commissar Jeski. He constantly talks to his attorneys, and when Pettit was speaking today, he would stare right at Pettit, or when they would put pictures up, especially of Dr. Pettit's head that was all bloodied after being hit with a baseball bat, Commissar Jeske didn't shy away from that. He stared at those pictures and then would look back at Dr. Pettit. We're live in New Haven. I'm Jamie Muro, News